after Rizpah stayed out there for about five months, when King David learned what Rizpah had done, he arranged for her son's bones to be buried in the king's grave that was given to Saul. Now, you got to hear the significance of that. The burial location in Old Testament times was super big deal. Big deal, not little, big deal. So for her boy's bodies to be taken down by some of the king's guards that he sent, and then to be taken, and for David to say, Rizpah's two boys will be buried in the same royal tomb structure that, that are kept for tombs of kings. That was beyond a major, major honor. Now, let me tell you what real youth ministry is. 45 years, if you want to know what 45 years has taught me, real youth ministry is hanging around with a bunch of teenagers into their college years, some of them, some of them their adult years, but especially during their youth years when their flesh and their humanness makes them pretty smelly. Um, They're not grateful. They're not highly motivated. They don't all come running into the service going, mighty youth volunteer, help me to get closer to God tonight. You know, most of them about a million miles from that. But real youth ministry is refusing to quit on those same people. Hanging in with a bunch of of smelly teenagers, spiritually that is, until one day, here comes the punchline. One day, because you refuse to give up on them, they go to see the king. Heaven's for real. I feel like me sometimes. I, I don't know. You know, I, I want to believe it, but I'm like the guy in the New Testament. Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. But it's for real. And though we don't talk about it much because we're not trying to be scarce, so is hell. And Jesus says, only one way to heaven. If sermons could get today's youth culture all saved and in love with Jesus alone, a whole lot more teenagers would be saved now. But I think it's the power of the word of God, but then of some of us that get to live that scripture in front of them. You go, Jeannie, I don't have enough time. I'm going to quit because I don't have enough time. Listen, Dick and Barb Williams didn't have a million hours with me. It was, they both worked secular jobs. They both had families. They both had children. They had a marriage. They had four boys. They didn't have time to do it. But when I was with them in their tacky little Sunday school class of seven or so kids, they made me feel like I mattered. We didn't even have a youth service. It was just that 9.30 to 10.30 Sunday morning hour. What spiritual can happen for a teenager 9.30 to 10.30? Not much. But Dick and Barb Williams, just like you're somebody's Dick and Barb. Somebody's, tell me their names again. What and Sue? Rick and Sue. He wouldn't be here without them. I wouldn't be here without Dick and Barb, don't quit, Rizpah. Don't quit. Don't quit. Yeah, you could make more money if you took that little bit of time and quit and work longer hours. You could do this, you could do that. But listen, God will repay you one day. Don't quit. 